Yo, yo, my shit is low. Shit is low. Turn his EQ. Shit is, yeah, Sounds EQ muffly. my shit right. Yeah, put some highs in there. Turn them up. Put some highs All right, put a little auto tune yeah, on yeah, that yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> I, I like where this is going. Hey, City, make sure you can come over and get some good stuff for City. My artist, City, the great what? in the building, ladies and gentlemen. We, we, we cultivate and we bring in them forth. We pass in the torch. Propagation. And it Speaking of passing the here. torch, that's why that's we right. have you guys here. Amen. It's actually, um, you guys have held the torch for decades. The reason why we are all here and the reason why the National Hip Hop Museum exists is because after holding the torch for so many years and accomplishing so much, it is our obligation as Americans to give you guys your flowers and honor you guys. So right now, can we get a big round of applause for all of our inductees? No doubt. No doubt. Special One, Ed, CL Smooth. Drez, and our host of the day, one of the most important hip hop pioneers in the history of American music, the one and only Grandmaster Kaz, everyone. With the world's greatest DJ, also our music director, is the one and only DJ RBI on the ones and twos, everybody. And before we get into the discussion today, which will be about how we got here, right? 50 years later, it's amazing that we are celebrating some of the most important hip-hop heroes that we grew up with. And so... The man that's going to lead this discussion, the world's leading expert, the world's number one hip-hop historian, our hip-hop historian at the National Hip-Hop Museum. A big round of applause for Jay Kwan, everybody. I was sitting right next to him the whole time. Right. <laughs> now, without further ado, I'm going to let Jay open it up. And we're going to listen to about an hour's worth of, you know, background and understanding and questions. And at the end of, at the <laughs> end of... Ten minutes. <laughs> to stretch that out. No at mouth. the end of this, we're going to open up for about five, ten minutes of questions for these amazing icons that we have here today. So, Jay Kwan, thank you so much. Take it away, everybody. Okay, this question is to everybody individually. We'll start with Ed. And, you know, feel free to chime in you know, whenever it's relevant for the rest of the uh, people on the panel. So in the year of hip hop's birthday, as a culture, what improvements, if any, do you think we need to make as participants and for you guys as, you know, gatekeepers and elders in the culture? What do you think we need to do going forward? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, first of oh, all. we got an hour, we got an hour's worth. Yeah, we got an hour. <laughs> okay, I need 45 minutes right now. <laughs> they gonna need to put some motherfucking respect on hip hop's name, period. Hip hop is the top generating music genre for how long now? Every corporate entity, everything, every media, every medium is all hip hop. So why the fuck they don't respect us in the way that they should? They don't uphold us like they do these rock and roll legends, these soul and whatever, whatever. We are them right now. We are the ones selling millions of records, streaming millions of records. We deserve the respect, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and as far as what we need to do is what we are doing. We're unionizing. We're making billions of dollars, if not trillions by now, over the decades, and we have no organization. So with that being said, we seek an organization right now. I am as well as with Curtis Blow, KRS-One, the Hip Hop Alliance, MC Light, Chuck D, everyone here is invited and involved. It's the Hip Hop Alliance, you know what I'm saying? Y'all come and um, we're gonna unionize. We want fair wages, we want retirement, we want health care. We actually just got a situation with SAG-AFTRA, so that health care plan is open to us. As so that's what this is about. This is about how do we, how do we take care of our families, you know, our children. I know we all have children, right? So how do we do all that and still survive in this climate? And how do we stand up for ourselves as a community of millions of people? This is, we, we, we are driving this economy, period, hip hop. So, 100%. you know, we need to just organize. That's what I'm saying. And take control of what is ours and represent it. We all business 
uh, entities right now. That's what we are. So we need to respect that. Respect that part and act as such. Mecca Don, see how smooth. What you think we need to do going forward, bro? I concur. Um, it's hip hop has been life altering. Hip hop has given me everything that I've ever wanted in life. It's never cheated me. It's never held me back. It's never put me at a point where I had to question myself. It's always opened up doors for me. It's always put me in a position to thrive. It's always put me in a position to take care of my children, my family, the people who I care about, the people who I most respect. Um, I can never give enough respect to hip hop. I was a listener first. I was a follower first. And then it made me a leader. It made me a position player. It made me a factor in this world because my voice is the key to people understanding that black people and people all around the world are the catalyst to this culture. And whether you see a camera on it or not, the life that hip hop gives you is extraordinary. It takes you all around the world it takes you to places that you would never, ever visit. You would never, ever see these places. And I'm just so grateful that I'm cultured in that way because in my family, education was the biggest thing till I came along and showed them that everything in that book you read, I visited, I saw, and they paid a ticket to come see me your black child. So that's a big accomplishment in my family and so many other families. And so many other times we get to say things and open up to people and tell people what we really feel, but we tell them through our music. We speak through our music. Our music is very vital to our existence. Our existence is very important as a people. And though we may not have it together, we may not have what the other cultures have. No, we don't. We may not have the unity they have. No, we don't. We may not have the love they even have. But look what we create for ourselves under pressure. Yeah, sir. And the pressure is enormous. The pressure's big. The pressure's vital. Because either it's going to be coal and we're going to burn it to eat. Oh, we gonna make some diamonds around here. The ones you don't wear, the ones that's in your heart, the ones that's in your soul, the ones that put you in that studio and make you write things that you never thought you can write. You never thought you can say that. And that would be the impact of your life that would carry you through 30 years later. 100%. Dreads. 30 years. Um, if I could get some water, I'd appreciate it from anywhere. But um, <clears throat> thanks. Um, I'm listening to my brothers, and uh, yeah, very well spoken. Sincerely, um, great things come from hip hop. Hip hop definitely gives us the opportunity to blow up. Hip hop also gives us the opportunity to implode. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And one of the things that I'm seeing in our culture is the willingness to implode. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're in a very, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a pitchfork situation. Where there's a variety of ways this can go. You know what I'm saying? And um, sometimes when I'm looking at all of the things that hip hop has afforded us, I question where we're willing to go. We don't have to go anywhere at this point but up as a community, as, as, as a music, as, as, as a genre of music, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, Turn them up a little bit. Turn Dredd's mic up if you can. Check, 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 check. One, two, thank you. <clears throat> I, I feel like um, right now is a, it, it's a shit or get off the toilet. It's a do or die situation. Our lives are at stake and we gotta pay attention to who the gatekeepers are. We gotta pay attention to why you don't hear our voices until right now. 
that you didn't know what we thought until right now. And we think. Look at the motherfuckers that, that we're following. Like, like, like they do have elders that think. But you wouldn't know that because of the gatekeepers, because of the way that we're willing to walk this. Everything that brothers spoke to speaks, exists. But beyond that is where we're going. You know what I'm saying? And yo, I, I, I applaud the union. I pray that that's what becomes available to us. I, I, I as well am trying to you know, educate brothers to their publishing and, and, and things thereof and how to get it back and you know things that I'm doing and as I'm doing it, I'm relaying it, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm literally having the conversations with people. I'm getting phone calls from motherfuckers I, that don't call me because I'm giving up game. And niggas is like, yo, what are you doing? And this is no bullshit, I got one yesterday from an executive that's way up there. And he he made me laugh at him. <laughs> Cause he tried to lean on me. And I'm like, nigga, you soft as baby shit. Like, though you don't know me to be who I am, I know you to be who you are. Mm. And ain't, you ain't gonna do nothing. Like, but literally telling me I'm saying too much. By telling y'all, yeah, make sure two years before the 35 years that you file your shit because it cuts into his ability to do some shit on, on the other side of it. But fuck him. Word up, this is us, this is hip hop. You better know this shit. And as I learned it, I'm looking at the motherfuckers that knew it like, y'all suckers. Straight up, y'all suckers. Yep. Word up. Don't try to play me as anything less. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. And, 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 and this is what we're willing to do to ourselves. This is internal. We have the opportunity to really own our shit, to dominate some shit, to create a fucking real legacy, a dynasty. We shouldn't have to sacrifice a community so that one or two or three could do well. Mm. Fuck that. That's, yeah, that's where the crack game meets the rap game. And we done seen the results of the crack game. Right. It's a different game. This is us. Let's mind the gatekeepers. Let's pay attention to who's being supported and why they're being supported. Mm. And if the shit don't make sense, the fuck? Do I have to? If the shit don't make sense, stop. Word. Like, like, like motherfuckers are honestly surprised to hear something that you should have been known. How we think. Word up. You know what I'm saying? And that's real. Because motherfuckers could tell you how little TikTok think. Little num nums. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuckers, yo, and the thing about it, these motherfuckers aren't even old enough to be speaking in front of you. For motherfuckers to be following the shit that they doing. <laughs> it should feel awkward. Cause it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, and 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 that's where my head is at with what's going on, like, like where, where hip hop is at is in a place where we are at a crossroad. And we could, we, we could take advantage of everything that's been presented right here, and, and it's a lot, that's a lot. It's a lot to give up. Right. Word up, that's a lot to give up. All right. Word. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I'm a little parched. I was in the back smoke. I mean, talking. <laughs> <laughs> ah. All right. My question is: um, In the wake of the new way that music is being recorded, uh, marketed, and distributed, what changes um, have you made to to navigate the new way that that things are going on now in music? Start with you, Ed. Um, well, for one, I don't really participate in the rap race. I don't even worry about rapping. What I, I have a nonprofit organization called Special Ed Arts and Literacy. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the last 35 years of my life and making sure 
that I can educate and enlighten some youth coming up into this game. I see a lot of youth coming up into the game and the mortality rate is crazy. Yeah. They come into this game to die right now. And that's not what we about and that's not what we want. So I'm reaching out and educating them as far as, first of all, the mindset. Why are you coming into hip hop? What is your position here and what is your message here? Because you can't come in here thinking that you're going to bring the streets to art and then live to tell about it. <laughs> okay? You got to be a businessman if you come in here to do business. If you on the streets, then you do that on the streets. That don't work on camera because you end up in a nice little cell Thanks. or under the ground. So I just like to reach back out. I mentor children. I go to the schools. I talk to them. Um, I have artists that I mentor. Here's one of them right here, City the Great. So, you know, from from zero to 100, you feel me? That's how I take them. And for nothing more than the past on the torch, you understand? So I don't really participate in the game. I don't compete with nobody. I don't have no competition. All right. You understand? No competition here. So I'm not worried or concerned about anybody except these children. So that's what I do. It's SEAL Special Ed Arts and Literacy. Y'all can go to my website, sealartsandliteracy.org, and y'all can see exactly what I'm doing. What I'm doing in the schools, what I'm doing on the streets, what type of programs and curriculum I'm engaging in. We doing knowledge ciphers where we spreading free knowledge online. We doing Zoom sessions. We dealing with jobs, um, economics, politics. We dealing with real life individuals that actually participate in these areas of interest. And we let them engage for free with the community, teach them how to do things, how to uh, do the same things that they've done and had success with. So we pattern success, you know, and we use technology to do it. So um, to, to spread the message. So there's a lot of ways that, um, you know, I do still engage in the hip hop industry without having to go and make a record. However, we are doing a new self-destruction project. So we have conferred uh, KRS and I and the elders, Curtis Blow, Chuck D and everyone. We're doing a self-destruction album that we have already started recording. Shout out to Kid Capri for the heat and, and you know, kind of quarterbacking things. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I do. I do it for the culture. I don't do it to compete. I have no competition. Understood. Understood. CL, same question. Uh, I know you got new music coming out. Um, what changes have you made to navigate the new landscape as far as the way music is marketed and distributed? Well, I don't really worry about that. I think that's uh, somebody that I groom to talent to put under me to worry about that. My, my key is worrying about me and my talent and what God gave me to work with. So there's always somebody talented in this world that knows how to circumnavigate all that other technical stuff. That's not what I was in the game for. I was in the game to paint the picture and let them juggle the numbers. As long as you pay me what I want, we're good. I don't, I don't, I don't want to argue over money. It's very small. I don't want to argue over money when we already made money and we're continuing to make money. Money shouldn't be the issue. What we want anymore when you're at this age and at this level of life and you've taken so much of your time and your life to build things. I don't want to talk about money. I want to talk about art and life and building and what the next little kid want out of me because my daddy couldn't give it to me like that. And his daddy couldn't give it to him like that. But I can. Dress. Mm. Read the question. Uh, the question is, in the wake of the new wave music is recorded, marketed, and distributed, uh, what changes have you made to navigate? Um, well, I think for me it's just definitely been a process of, um, of a dinosaur learning new tricks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whereas, you know, like you have to be able to be, you're going to be rooted in who you are. That, that's who we are. You know what I'm saying? We, we're analog. That's where I come from. I'm, I come from an analog world. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I have an understanding of technology. You know what I'm saying? Am I well-versed? Now nah, I'm a dinosaur. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm going to be who I am. But in my mind, I'm always going to be willing to be a, 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 megala, a megala dinosaur. You know what I'm saying? The, the, with that, with the, with the, the Pikachu's transport, whatever the Pikachu's trans, transferring to. You know what I'm saying? That's you gotta be willing. One of those. You gotta be willing to be that. <laughs> you gotta be willing to be that in your mind. You know what I'm saying? And that's just to say that, yeah, I'm gonna be a dinosaur, but I'm willing to to trans what's what's the word? They transform or what have you. They 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 yeah, it's an, it's an elevation though. You know what I'm saying? They're an accelerated version of themselves. That's right. You got to be willing to be that in your mind, and that and and that's where that's where you meet the younger generation. That's where that that's 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 where you're able to kind of find a space where you're going to speak to dinosaurs because you're a dinosaur. You know what I'm saying? So the analog heads, they're always going to get me. You know what I'm saying? They're always going to get me, but I got to be able to walk a middle ground. You know what I'm saying? And that's the same way I felt about hip hop when hip hop was young. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had to find a way to talk to middle America just as well as we talk to the block. That's good business. You know what I'm saying? That's good business. We were one of the groups that were able to get on television to come into your, tele into your home in middle America. That had to be the right groups. They had to say the right things. They had, they had, to, they had to represent it correctly for it to be palatable to everyone. It was a, you know, it was a time just like this. It was a lot of crossroads. They were talking about it was a fad and shit thereof. Look, look what that fad turned into. You know what I'm saying? This shit feeds a lot of motherfuckers on a lot of different levels. Word up, from clothing to fucking camera work to videography to fucking before we even get to the stage and the light man and the sound man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the ticket taker. It's a lot of people that eat off this shit. Transportation. Yeah, oh yeah, no doubt. Catering. <laughs> Everything. Everything. You know what I'm saying? Before, before we even turn the mic on. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, man, like, the music has to be able to be palatable. So that way it markets itself to a degree. To a degree, that's where that's where you kind of can get someplace where the gatekeepers that exist might not put you. Because there's a lot of gatekeepers. Yo, ageism in this shit is ridiculous. Ridiculous. This yeah, shit is sad. It is. The, the ageism is sad. Whereas, you know, like there's a lot of shit, especially as a, a elder black man, for, that we have to counter. Because my intent, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm a Rolling Stone. I'm, I'm Kiss. I'm gonna be rocking this shit till the wheels fall off. Period. That's, that's what I'm here to do. Word up! I'm here to rock until I can't. Until until there's no more there's, there's no more music in my heart. You got me. You know what I'm saying? All right. Word up! Yeah. That's what I'm here to do. All right. Until All right. I can't do it. All right. Word. And and as and 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 in my in my heart, I'm like, yo, how fucking lucky am I? Word. How lucky am I? Word up. But um, just to say, like, yo, like, be put your music in a place where. No matter, no matter, it's, it's, it's timeless. Speak to the people, speak for the people. Or like, like, like that's how you do it. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's my intent. I intend to keep doing that. All right. All right. Moving to the next question. Uh, this is for everybody. So I'll wear it again. What do you feel is the most important thing that hip hop has contributed to the world over the last five decades? Um, the most important thing hip hop contributed is opportunity and hope. You know, opportunity and hope. Um, with that comes wealth. So, you know, it gave people the, the, the mustard seed that grew into this trillion dollar empire where they have in, you know, museums for it. Yeah. So, yeah, check, check. CL. Question again. What do you feel is the most important thing that hip hop has contributed to the world over the last five decades? Great music. Great artists. 
people who, who, who've taken our generations to heights that we've never seen before with music, such as Public Enemy and Eric B and Rakim and the Fat Boys and who were we just talking about in the back? The Rapping Duke. Word up. <laughs> Word up. <laughs> Uh -huh. Everybody knew that. <laughs> Drez. Um, yeah, the, the music. Um, it's given us, you know, our generation's Marvin Gaye's and, you know what I'm saying, it's given us our generation's, you know what I'm saying, Nina Simone. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's Barry giving us, White. yeah, Barry, I see you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I see you. You know what I'm saying? But it has, you know, like it's, it's giving us, and, you know, I dare say a Pikachu that's advanced. <laughs> no, I'm stop. But just to say, it's giving us some, you know, like something that's palatable f just for us that we created, much like the soul singers of the 50s, 60s, 70s. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like that was for them, the doo-wop. This is doo-wop, but on steroids. You know what I'm saying? And and it's ours. Like, like we own it, we created it, and we're in a place where we could literally lose it because there's so much money getting thrown at it. There's so much money getting thrown at it that motherfuckers is willing to sell whatever the fuck they got to sell. Word up, whatever they got to sell. I've never seen motherfuckers Willing to do so much for so little. Word. Like. <laughs> Word. Grandmaster Kaz is taking a phone call. He's Grandmaster Kaz is on the phone. Hey, I'm on the what phone with it? LL Cool J. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jess. That's my boss. What was we saying, man? What were we talking about? I'm serious. What was he saying? You were saying there's a lot of money been being thrown. Oh yeah, I really was. That was hilarious. Um, but actually, the next before you get too deep into your thing, the next question that I'll be asking is gonna be uh directly related to what's going on with you right now, if you're able to talk about what what you got going on. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, yeah, I was talking about what, what people are willing to sell. You know what I'm saying? And um, something I want to say, like, you know, like, this music has taught me one thing, that being rich and being wealthy are two different things. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Being rich and being wealthy are two different things. I've never been rich, but I've always been wealthy. You know what I'm saying? Always been wealthy. But I've never been a millionaire or anything of the sort. You know what I'm saying? And I've never needed to be. Honestly, like I look at some of the cats that are, and I look at them like, like, and? Like, what are you affecting? Like, 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 why does it matter when nothing changes? You know what I'm saying? I've been able to live a beautiful life somewhere under the parameter of, and I'm happy. I know cats that are rich that aren't happy. I'm sure y'all do too. Far from. You know what I'm saying? So what's it worth? Like, yo, stay wealthy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to be them to be happy. And music needs to explain that every day. Every day music should tell you that. Word up. That being happy, some motherfuckers can't pay for it. You understand? Word up, some motherfuckers can't pay for it. Word. All right. All right, guys, next question. 
As artists who've enjoyed major label success and released independently, what are the advantages of your major label affiliation as if, opposed to independent? If any. Hmm, I'm strong on that. The advantage is just the exposure and marketing because they own the market and they can get you on all the mediums. They can get you on covers, on the radio. They pay for shit. Like, that's it. Otherwise, that's the only real difference. You know, they can find more ways to monetize it internationally because they in that niche. And they can put you in a hovercraft on the video when, when you like. Well, Chica Bruce did that. They just gave her the money. Ah. She came up with that. It was a brilliant woman. That, that was dope. That, um. That put me on a hovercraft. That was dope. Profile ain't do shit but rob me. Period. You know, so. Well, that's what they shout do. Out, yeah, shout out to Chica Bruce. But they did put me in a position to be here now. They put me in a position at that time and point in, in time that led me to this point in time. So for that, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I receive. But an overall report card, get the fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Understood. CL. Uh, you know, I'm not going to front. I think when you come in and you, you're, you're new and you're inquisitive, you're a little kid and they throw all this money at you, you're fucking happy. <laughs> you're fucking, you, you know, you're happy. Something's going to change. I don't know if it's going to change for the good or the bad or the maybe or the sad, but I'd rather take a chance with the money because you're taking your family and you're doing something for your child that you can never do, never was done for you. So that was my impact, whether they were robbing me that we had to get to that point to understand what they were taking that I didn't want them to take, of course, but that comes with knowledge, that comes with experience, that comes with the depths of losing and winning and what you get out of it and what you don't get out of it. What you, ex your experiences are your riches. So when I look at it, it was a little kid that got an understanding of you came from nothing and then you got all these cameras and they, they, they take a picture of you and they put you here and you go over here. How are you not going to be grateful for that? And they put In you a on sense. a record with Johnny Gill. Yeah, how are you not going to be grateful for that? So my journey was 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 a little different where I didn't have to necessarily, I wanted to be rich and I did that. And I, I got poor again. And then I turned around and had to get rich again. But I had to understand that it really wasn't me anymore. I was, I was walking what God chose me to do. So it wasn't up to me. This is not me with my talent. This is what God gave me to work with. And this is all that it is. And what I do with the big bag of money, I used to never, I never, I still don't care about money, but it's important to keep ward off the devils, the evils, the people who don't understand or care where I'm coming from or my people, what love, what concern, what health they have, what, what, how can I protect them? This is what my music is about because I knew I lived my music. I lived every word of it. So it wasn't about were you rich. It was about when somebody heard you, you knew you was rich. Ain't nobody got to give you no money now. You knew you were rich because they can hear you now. And this is power. All of this is power. It's a voice. You can't duplicate it. I can If I ran for mayor with these guys, I could win it in any town because it's a voice you need. It's a direction. And then... We're not coming here with somebody who, um, you know, doesn't have, thinks like me. He thinks different. He thinks different. He thinks different. He thinks different. But the, at the table, when you have different minds, it creates one big good decision. And then when you go independent, then when you do all these things that gave you the experience to, to not be afraid to be independent, then you're fine. You know where to, you know what to put under you. You know what people to hang around. You know what talent to put around you. You know what writers, you know, I can only hang around. They say in the Bible, um, uh, 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 bad things spoil useful habits. 
You understand? So it's like if you want to hang around somebody who and you want to grow, then you're going to hang around somebody who's going to water you and give you that sun to be independent. You got to be, you got to think independent. These companies can't just say you're independent or you do this or you're, you're a major, you're in a major. You're never major till you get your mind on a major move of being independent. And that means circumnavigating your life in a way. When the cameras are off, when you're not signing autographs, when you're, when you're, when people are not calling you out of your name, this is the life. When you're looking in the mirror, that's the life. That's the life right there of independence. So that's me in a nutshell. You got to be industry to talk these terms. I'm not really industry. I'm, I'm just pro people. Understood. <laughs> Dres, advantages to being a major, um, if any. Yeah, man, the majors are... One thing, one of the things that I learned real quickly is how business the shit is, mm. how business it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, especially as an artist, we go in there with our heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We leave with our heart, and that shit, they might as well be analyzing piss. They like, yo, it's your piss, you know? And then, all right, we're walking down the hall with your piss, and it goes to the lab, and they, all right, this is number da 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 da. Your shit really winds up becoming a numbers number da da da. You know, yeah. and um. It blew my mind when I started just looking at how sterile shit was. And when I found out I was on I was on Mercury. Mercury is owned by Polygram. Polygram was owned by Philip Slight. Philip Slight don't give a fuck about my album. And I knew that. You know what I'm saying? I knew Philip Slight didn't give a fuck about my album, but they own Polygram. You know what I'm saying? So I learned real quickly. All right, this shit is not a, about your heart. Real quickly, it's not about your heart. And as much as an artist is gonna leave with his heart, still, still gonna leave with your heart. You know what I'm saying? It's about the business. It's about what you're gonna turn over. It's about what you're gonna bring to the, their table. Right. And not even polygram table, Phillips light table. Can Phillips light know who you are? You know what I'm saying? If you can get Phillips light to notice you, then you in good grace and the label fucks with you. The label fucks with you, they will put the machinery behind you to put you in everybody's fucking face. Which is something as an independent can be done, does happen organically sometimes, but that shit is hitting lotto. That shit is hitting lotto for real. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of motherfuckers be worthy of it, but plenty of motherfuckers that's gonna be in the machinery that's gonna be put in front of them. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the way that the business is structured. I had to learn that. I also had to learn that, you know what I'm saying, once I went independently, all of the things that a label does for me, I had to learn how to do myself. From manufacturing to distribution to promotion, Everything, I had to walk everything on my own. And and it's good that I did, you know what I'm saying? It's good to have an understanding of both sides because you begin to see where the label puts you in a place that you can't put yourself. Now it's for you to take advantage of it. I think the goal of everybody on a label is to go independent, you know what I'm saying? Because they now have this platform where they don't need the label as, and you better believe the label took advantage of you you better believe that it was a high, a high, a high interest loan, beyond a high interest loan, really. But you know, you want to shot, you want you you want to sign something short term, so that you can use what they've afforded you to do it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's really kind of what it should be. That should be the template. Um, at the same time, there's plenty of people that are afforded amazing life. Styles and times staying under the, under the umbrella of the label. You know what I'm saying? A small portion. Then there's kind of, I think, journeymen like ourselves, you know what I'm saying, that are um, going to have to be able to function in both worlds. Period. You know, like the, we're always a record away from a major label wanting to do something with it. And for the right number, you know, it could happen. But 
But ultimately, we're trying to do it ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Like I put out music independently myself and I have an amazing project that I, that's coming and you know, right now, it's not signed to anything as independent, but it's my job to make sure that I'm promoting and letting people know that it's coming and things thereof. One of the things that I also, you gain from a major label is a room, is not a room, a building full of lawyers. You know what I'm saying? Like, trust me, anytime somebody uses the choice is yours, there's a building of motherfuckers I can call to make sure I get paid. Very important, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Very important. Anytime you've ever heard the choice is yours, I don't give a fuck in the elevator. I got paid. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, and that's one of the advantages of the major label, that you can make sure that, you know, if you find yourself in a publishing agreement, which I am, if you find yourself in a publishing agreement, then it becomes a situation where it's, that's y'all's money. So go get our money. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and every time, I don't care from whoever's record to, I get paid, period. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the advantages as well. You know, it, it keeps it business. There's no, there's no, let's, wait, there's no, I did it this way for that, I did it this way for that. It's all business. All right, okay, work. So that, for the next three questions, there will be individual questions for each person on the panel. And the first one is Dre, so go ahead and get you. You need, another, you need another water? No, the next three questions will be individual, and you're going to be one of the first. You need another water since you just got finished talking? I uh, probably will be, yeah. We can get him another water. We get a vodka and water. <laughs> <laughs> but the question, you know, take your time, um, if you're able to speak on a class action lawsuit that you're spearheading, how long did it take you to put your case together or you know every or your assets for the case and what influenced you to do it at the time that you did it, if you're able to speak on that? Um, to be honest, I'm not able to speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I definitely would rather not okay. speak to it. So I got another question for you then, and it has nothing to do with the business. Sure. In a tradition of songs that started off as just songs on the album and then the remix became incredible. What, what made you guys remix The Choice Is Yours? Because, I mean, the remix is so not the original. Um, well, it was the second single. And we come from an era when whenever your single came, whatever single it was going to be, it got a remix. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we um went about remixing it. And it initially had three brand new verses, you know what I'm saying? And um, the label kind of, my man uh, Dave Gossett and Lisa Cortez, big shout out to both of them. They were like, you know what, like, like I, we love what you did with this third verse. Like how about if we just keep the first two original verses and make this third verse kind of like the remix? You know, we already got this, the sound of it. And you know, I'm a young artist and I, I wasn't that attached to it. You know what I'm saying? Where in that, in that particular space, whereas I felt like you know, like nah, that's how I wrote it. That's how I, you know, yeah, I, if that's how you feel. That's what you're telling me you can win. I right, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Just stayed flexible about the whole situation, and um, they wound up making a good call. You know what I'm saying? That um, and and that's really how it came to be. You know, it just was the second single. And from what I remember, engine engine number nine wasn't on the original version, right? At all. Like I said, I wrote three yeah, new you wrote verses. Wrote three new versions, yeah. right? That's that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just gonna roll with whatever the people say, man. I'm at, I'm in a place where. I'd have to listen at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, like, cause, cause honestly, like, it's like a lot of cats, you know, like. I've done I've done four or five solo projects since the two albums that you know people are always gonna want to talk about. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so there's a lot of music in my catalog right mm -hmm. now, but mm -hmm. cat but people really just kinda identify me kinda within a certain within a certain space. Certainly. So it's been a lot of music for me to just be like the skit right before the, you know. Yeah, you don't remember at all. Like 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 I you know, like not that I don't remember, but I you know, but the sequencing is a lot. Yeah, you know. certainly, certainly. All right, Special Ed, coming into the industry as a teen, 
Are there any precautions that you would offer any young aspiring artist? Oh, hell yeah. Don't trust nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust none of them lawyers, especially if, um, you know, they was introduced you, to you by someone else uh, in the industry. <laughs> Find your own attorney. But um, I would say just do your due diligence. Now, there's a lot more experience. There's 50 years of experience to learn from. When I came in, there was very little. Um, and my parents, they, they came from Jamaica, so they had no knowledge of the business going on here in the American recording industry. So they couldn't help me. So we had to navigate and figure it all out on our own. But now, 50 years later, there's commonalities, there's standardizations, there's shit you expect and some shit you may not expect. But it's getting better with us knowing our worth and knowing what we can command. And um, that's all you have to kind of learn from. And a lot of children are doing their due diligence and they're also involved in that technological aspect into it, which um, we still have to sit down and deconstruct because who, who came up with that shit? Yeah. You understand? So, you know, Overall, that's about it, man. I, I would say just doing your due diligence, do the knowledge, and um, you know, just keep your antennas up, man. Trust is a very powerful thing. I've been through a lot, 35 years of hearing a lot of shit. You understand? So just imagine that. You just gotta have a lot of tech to built in. Gotcha. All right, last question. Uh, CL Smooth, you stress the importance of family and education all throughout your career, all throughout your music, your lyrics. What do you think of anything the record industry should do to restore some balance in the content so we can get it back like it was where, you know, you had a certain amount of NWAs, which also had a, had a Bismarck in, you had a CL Smooth, a Pete Rock, you had a kid in play. What can we do to, ba to balance it? What can the industry do, in your opinion, to balance that? Uh -huh. I mean, I, I would have to say it's driven by the product. You know what I mean? As long as the product is good, maybe then the industry can get behind it. But in order for the industry to get behind something, it has to be good. You know, uh, nobody's going to uh, try to sell you a, a, a bad bag of apples, you know, that was 30 years ago. But if you could re refine it and, and put it back to maybe the 90s going into here, and you display that in the studio, and you display that in your performances, and you display that in your content, which it can be marketable, more marketable, more sellable than murder, and rape, and robbery, and extortion, and telling. Hmm. So, you know, I guess if we didn't tell more, we'll have more shit. Great answer. Great answer. That's it. Almost everybody, because here's the thing, right? You guys oh, are so a. deep and you talk amazing stuff, but some of us fans have like silly questions about skits, okay? So we're gonna just take a little five minutes. Don't make the longest questions. Don't ask them about their favorite foods, okay? But right now, Okay, because I, I, these guys, everyone wants to talk to you guys, you know. So right now, if anyone has a question, go ahead and raise your hand. You got a question? Yeah, let's start first. This kid from the DMV, I know each one of you. You guys gave me the opportunity, working at BET, to let them listen to me and make Rap City. Okay? All nine of you up there, and I'm talking about everybody up here. I want to thank you for making me a force. Thank you. Because without you, and I fought hard to get every one of y'all playing, because I even, I remember Troy, CL. You know what I'm saying? I got nothing but love and respect, but I want to ask you something about hip hop right now. Okay. Gee, uh, I hope they know your kids that hear this. Doesn't hip hop need an enema because they got so much garbage uh, out here? I'm not putting down any artists or plenty of artists who make money, but the core of hip hop, I don't want everybody to sound like you guys and do the 80s and whatnot. But come on, if I, had a, if I had a nickel for every time I could put all the mix together and they all saying the same damn thing, two live crew, too much, too much amount of money, bitches and everything, excuse ladies, I'm sorry. I'm just saying, what do you think it's gonna to take to bring the culture? Because they're selling out more than building. 
They're just making their money, running with it. You're not going to hear them 15 years from now. CL, let's have CL answer that. What, what do you think? Because everyone has an opinion about the stuff that we're hearing right now. What do you think about that? Well, you know, it. it when I look at it from my perspective, uh, their lives are far more interesting than their music. So uh, that's that's what drives me to look at them and say, well, this must be a different avenue for me because when I was growing up, we we deliberately, we wanted to be deliberate about what we were doing because we wanted to get out of the street. I, once I got some money, I was out. I wasn't trying to go back to be around some poor hungry lions and I'm not hungry like them anymore. Right. So um, the pro what drives them is different and and what what keeps their their light on is different because I, I, I'm not going to jail with millions of dollars. I'm not I just can't do it. I don't I'm, it's not built in me to be restructured like that to give to to take my money you give me now you're giving me instead of a couple of million dollars you're giving me five ten million dollars from poor and then you're telling me to go and then I'm gonna buy some jewelry which is overpriced and is not worth it so you ruin that money then you go buy a couple of cars you ruin that money then you buy the house, a big house, and you don't even have that many relatives, and you ruin that money. And then and then you turn around, and you have a bank account that you let somebody else run, and you run it, and you ruin that money. So everything is about, about the backward shit of it for somebody to get rich now. I was when I when they were stealing from us, they were masterminds. They were like they were like scientists of stealing. <laughs> they, this shit right here is like I, I, all you do is I got to give you seven eight million and you be on Rikers Island, you know, with seven eight million dollars. And who's who's getting that money? Who's getting that? You know, I never talk about money till I seen that. Till I seen that, my mind was on the art of it, the structure of it. Now I'm, I, I see what he does with his music. I see what he does. He runs a a a, a Rico. He runs a sauce team mm. of Rico guys. So he's not putting. So so he lost all that money over there. Then you gotta feed these motherfuckers. These motherfuckers don't got no money. They ain't rapping. They ain't doing shit. You giving them what? What tools are you giving them? You're not saying, yo, Rakim. I'm going to give you this toolbox. You're going to go run this business. Yo, shitty cuz. I'm going to give you this. And you're going to go over here and sweep all this shit up. And we're going to run that business. you giving them guns. you giving them drugs. And they coming back to you with the shit. So what kind of business is this? It ain't music. It can't be. Because we not that stupid. Now I'm sounding like Drez, because you know this shit ain't making sense no more. This shit ain't making sense, and the music ain't making sense neither, because the business ain't making sense. So if nothing makes sense, what the fuck we talking about? But 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 but, 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 but you hitting it right I'm, on the head. I'm, if I'm, they I'm spend it, if they spending that for that, you gotta imagine for what. Okay, but then you got what they go, making. You blew that money, because that's what you what it but, looked but, like. But, but it looked like then you got but, then but you they, gotta pay your but lawyer. Who, but who's richer? You hold on. You gotta pay that lawyer, the music lawyer, first. Then you gotta pay a criminal lawyer. What? And that nigga <laughs> want way more money than that music lawyer. The music but lawyer. But your music lawyer gonna gonna refer to the criminal yeah, lawyer. So you. he's gonna <laughs> refer you to his cousin. <laughs> and they gonna keep that money. <laughs> They gonna keep that the money. Family. And they gonna so they kept the you car money. Saying? They kept the car Yo. money, the house money. You know Where's your kids at? Yo. Where's your mother at? Where's your cousin at? We, we Where's your grandparents? The place is deep. If they throw in, so if, who are we talking if about? They throwing five. How you gonna do a show on Rikers Island? How you how you gonna do a it's, show? It's in the day room in Attica. How you gonna do? It? <laughs> that shit Where's is in the, the day other room. money going? And then, and, and then wait wait. You're telling. 
after you just after I just fed you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Let's get to that. Then we're telling. <laughs> after I just fed you all this money, I just gave you a couple of. I just gave you a big slice of my cake out of my shit for you to tell on. To be a porcupine. So that's the new music. Yeah. That's the new music. I res- uh, what I was rapping about is like is like. What's that? A dinosaur, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. But some people are happy <laughs> to be a dinosaur. For to real. be a dinosaur. Yeah. Word up because, yeah. because there was values and you know, like like there was something that we stood Man, on. And I'd rather get off there was my couch that we than stood get on. out of a cell. I'd rather get off my couch. It's that simple. Any day. It's that simple. That's real. Any Do day. you want to go to the graveyard? Do you want to go to jail? Or do you want to get off your couch? We got enough time for like two more questions. But that was the most thorough. I'd rather struggle out here than live well in there. Yeah, round of applause for that answer. I'm more interested in their lives. I think we all agree. I'm more interested in their lives than their music. It's really true. Their music is a secondary, their music is the ploy. Let's Let's go with another question right here, young lady. A question. Hey, everybody. I'm Zakia Ali. Hi. I'm a doctoral student here at Howard University. <laughs> but I taught, you know, but I taught at Tilden High School in Brooklyn. Aye. And I just want to say to all of you, I want y'all to stop staying on the periphery of education. Right now, education is making so much money off of hip hop pedagogy. You all brought this conversation about anti racism to the table. And I need y'all to stop being on the periphery of it. Stop letting everybody else tell us about how black males are supposed to feel, fetishizing the social emotional learning of black children. Y'all started the movement, but you're not getting paid from it. So that's a niche where you to start for you to start building up your money. Sure, sure. That's crazy. Well, real quick, I'm gonna let y'all know Great. DJ Great RBI statement. right here. Real Great. quick, real quick, Jeremy. Great statement. Go ahead. DJ I am RBI. a hip hop professor now at GW, George Washington University. So We've already roped in Grand Wizard Theodore, Master G's popped in. I reached out to Kaz, I think Kaz are too busy. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to him too. But yo, let's let's get that conversation going. I just wanna answer you directly because I'm, I'm of the same mentality that you are. And that's prob- part of the reason why I'm there. All right, so let's get that, let's get that going. I'm gonna and put I'm, that out and there. And I'm on the lecture circuit as well with Grandmaster Melly Mel. I'm bringing in Grandmaster Kaz. We are visiting I'm very colleges and uni- in, universities. In that. Stick them up. Yeah, yes, let's let's talk before I leave. Definitely, All right, I'm very we're gonna we're gonna take two more questions and then we got to take a break because we got to induct these guys. I don't have a question, but I do want to commend all of you. I think I'm the first hip hop fan. I was grown when y'all started rapping, and I was rapping right with you. Andres is my son, and I'm very proud. Not only of him, but of all of you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Like you were saying, coming from where we come from, not getting it to us, not being able to give it, he did it by himself. I'm sure all of y'all did, or most of y'all did, or did most of it, because we didn't know nothing about it. You know? And at the time, it was not the norm. But see, who wants to be the norm? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Who wants to do that? <clears throat> but th- this is this is the part. Y'all was talking about something. Y'all was letting us know how I was living. Y'all was letting the world know how I was living. Okay? It wasn't no joke. It wasn't no nothing funny. Mm-hmm. And and as your records came out, so did information, so did truth. Y'all are the truth. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Now, we got these we got these mumble rappers, these fake jewelry motherfuckers. Okay? Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> these borrowed cars and that's my cousin's mansion. Okay, where you think they got the idea for house party? The last one. Okay, let's get a cleaning job and go up in somebody's mansion because we have no morals. We don't have no cooth. We don't have shit. Mm. So I'm not asking a question, but I'm asking y'all to think about 
how can y'all take y'all's children, I'm talking about the mumble rappers and the dumb motherfuckers, because they're your children. Real talk, they are your children. How can you get them where you want them and where we need them? That's a question, That's a question and I think her son, who has two incredibly talented sons, we would like you to answer that. How, how can we help this generation? These ain't my kids, first of all. Let me stop. <laughs> nah. Don't put these um, little niggas on us. Nah, uh, yeah, right? You got to get a paternity <laughs> test on that one for real, for real. But uh, not. Nah. But they are. They are. And peace, man. I love you for real. But um, just to say, um, like, yeah, like, they did put us in a precarious position that, yo, we are uncles to them. And and being these little motherfuckers' uncles is damn near dangerous. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't stop us from being their uncles. You know what I'm saying? And I say that to all of the men sincerely. That like it's, we're in a place where we really have to, if nothing else, verbally be willing to check situations. Same way we got to... A punch in the chest, we got to be willing to punch these little niggas in their chest. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand that it's not coming from a, that, that it's coming from a place of love is the problem. That's, and it's a real problem. You know what I'm saying? But we still they uncles. We still have to step up to that plate and, and mentor and, and, and lead and educate and speak to, if nothing else, speak to. But more than anything, this is my word. If we willing to do the shit, y'all gotta have our fucking backs, man. Like, like, no, no, yeah, cause y'all haven't. Y'all haven't. If we if we step to some shit, we haters. There you go. We we on some other shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to be a hater, but y'all gotta have our fucking back, man. That's my word. Like, like word, that's word. word like I'm willing to speak to the shit. And address it straight up, but I need to know the people are behind me, man. Word up, don't have me on no fucking island. Word. All right, last one. Last one. That was good. Okay. She th she's been waiting. She deserves it. Here we go. Thank you so much. I want to thank you guys. You are so uh, humble. You guys are living legends. You speaking up here today. I'm proud to be black, okay? All right. Who's your top five? Oh, oh. oh man. So we're going to be here for three more hours. <laughs> you got to say cash. You're go looking off at off. me like you have it ready. I will go or do you have it. a top five? I don't have no ready. I like yeah. a lot of artists. I was yeah, inspired I like by many artists. And, you know. Top I, five artists that inspired you. Go. Top five artists that inspired That inspired me. you personally to be who you are today. Hmm. Top five. Shit. See, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. Stevie Wonder type. Stevie I, Wonder. I like Smokey Robinson. Smokey like Robinson. That. I like R and B. That's where I come right. from. Right. Mm -hmm. You talking about rap? Yeah, I like when they started rapping. But as far as music, I like you know Michael Jackson, the Jackson Five, okay. and shit like that. You okay. know what I'm saying I like real. I like music. Okay. Soulful music. What about West Indian music? Oh, Jamaican. Jamaican music. I love, music? Yeah. I love West Indian. All day. What about you, CO? What'd you grow Peter up on? Tosh, Bob Marley, Anything Barry, West Lee. Indian and, and cultured. Yellow I love Man. all cultured music. Um, I love I love mostly jazz. Jazz Word. and reggae are tied. Word. But I like a lot of jazz. I like um it, it varies. I like Miles. I like I like uh, uh I like even some white artists. I like I, it's just jazz to me. Yeah. It's just that's what I woke up with. So um and as far as rap, I would have to go back to the beginning, like 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 when I first heard like like I heard records, but when I heard Sucker MCs, I knew it was over. Okay, I knew it was over when I heard that. Is that what made you want to rhyme? It made me want to do anything. It made me want to do any and everything, like like have everything. So that was like the that was like the the opening where you you just said they can't deny this. This is all over the place. It's like the plague. And then after that, it was like um. Who inspired you is a better question. Yeah, yeah. Who inspired you? Because then inspired? I can answer that. Yeah, yeah. In rap. Okay, we in can rap. talk about right, it. Yes. Right, right, right. Run right. DMC. Um, 
Uh, LL Cool J definitely okay. inspired me. Like he inspired me. Um, Houdini, hell yeah, mm. hell yeah. The Fat Boys definitely yeah, did that's it for first me. Line up. Funky Four plus one more, it did it for me. And Curtis Blow, when he wow. Curtis yeah. Blow was like. Who, Curtis Blow was Michael Jackson at one time. Right, right. For real, Curtis Blow was Michael Jackson. Um, um, like, uh, in Public Enemy, Public Enemy, for somebody to say what they're saying and be so militant and so driven, it just, it's an influence. And, 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 and have, man, have to see a motherfucker dance like that. God Dress. Damn. Go ahead. Give, give, who inspired you? Um, I had, I had some MCs that really, uh, that were extra cool to me. Um, Just Ice being one of them. Um, yeah, Just Ice was dope. He was, he was obviously dangerous, but he was obviously intelligent as well. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I liked how he walked it. And, and the shit was dope. Um, I also was crazy about Tito from The Fearless Four. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, nice. I was I was able to identify him in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? And I, I I just liked his walk, you know what I'm saying? And always identified with him as an MC. This man sent to the right of me. Yes, sir. Kaz is one of the most masterful motherfuckers right now. Hell yeah. Right now. Word up. As an MC, like like we're talking as MCs, like 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 there's certain cats that showed you ability. You know what I'm saying? Yo, this is my word. On a dope record, he stood out like a sore thumb. You know what I'm saying? On a dope record, he stood out like a sore thumb. Time again. You know what I'm saying? Like he's just a dope MC. Um, there's also um, what was I about to just say? Uh, that I think is particularly dope. That kind of just helped me would be um um I was just thinking. Of, oh, god damn it, Melly Mel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mel showed me what this music could be. Yeah, real early. Where it'll be showed me what this shit could be. He was the Stevie Wonder of oh. hip hop, and at the top of my list would be Stevie Wonder. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, listen, listen, this is going to be special. The final question is from one of our VIPs. I don't know if you guys are aware, but right now in the building, we have 2021 inductee in the house. Disco B is with us from the yeah. Furious Five. Disco B. Okay. In the building, one of the most important pioneers in the history of hip hop. Sweet G is with us in the building, everyone. I don't know if you're thirsty for funky lemonade, but the one, the only, the fabulous, Chi Ali is in the building. And don't catch yourself on the wrong side of the tracks because my personal favorite MC, 2021 inductee, the one and only Elda Sensei is in the building. But the very last question belongs to Rhyme Syndicate's own. Donald D. Also, the B-Boys. Y'all know the B-Boys, right? Chuck Chill Out, Donald D, Brother B. I know a girl named Millie, acts real silly, lives in the Bronx, comes from Philly. Okay, but my last question is, as being a fellow MC brother of these three gentlemen right here, I want to know, y'all have dropped timeless classics that still get played a lot today. What was your favorite songs that you made, starting with Ed? Oh, that's a good question. The favorite songs that I made, I liked uh I like Taxin, man. Taxin was one of my favorite songs on the album. And that's probably one of the first songs I recorded and it had that fire to it. That's probably why I feel that way about it. And but I also like um Kryptonite off an album I released called Still Got It Made. I did that independently in Kryptonite. It was, you know, that whole album actually was very soulful and, and spiritual for me. So, yeah. What's the question? Your favorite song you made. Favorite song I made. I made a lot of songs. 
uh, my favorite. I don't really have a favorite. The song you're proudest of? Like, oh, the song I'm proudest of, uh, I commemorate every night. That's that's dedicated to my family, the people who inspire me the most, my aunts and uncles. That would be Troy. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Amen. And uh, the final answer of the podcast, before we get to inductions, the song that you are proudest of making, Drez. Um, yeah, without sounding um, <laughs> too egotistical, um, I'm really good with everything I've ever made. Yeah. Where, like, I, I feel good about, because I know where it all came from. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they get, they don't get the same result, mm. but they came from the same place. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Amen. That's yeah. how I feel. Round of applause, everyone. Yeah. Round of applause for the three inductees. We are going to take a 30-minute break, go get some alcohol, some cannabis, and some food, and in 30 minutes, the grand induction ceremony will kick off. Take it away, DJ RBI.